Hi, I'm John Allen, the editor of Crux, your one-stop shopping destination for the very best in smart, wired, and independent Catholic journalism. And welcome to another one of these occasional video features that we do on the Crux YouTube page, where we try to bring you a sampling of the most interesting faces and voices on the Catholic landscape today. Two years ago, in 2017, we marked the 50th anniversary of the Land of Lakes Statement. This was a document put out by leaders of Catholic higher education in America, above all, Father Theodore Hesburgh at the University of Notre Dame, that really set the pattern for Catholic university life in America for the next half century. Next year, in 2020, we will mark the 30th anniversary of Ex Corte Ecclesiae, an apostolic constitution released by St. John Paul II in 1990, inviting those same Catholic colleges and universities to a sort of an examination of conscience about what it means to be a Catholic university today. On the American landscape, probably one of the places where that reflection has been the most intense uh, has been the Magdalen College of Liberal Arts in Warner, New Hampshire. Uh, it is known for its commitment to a strong great books program, uh, it's known for its Arts of the Beautiful program, which is an effort to expose students over their four years of undergraduate studies to the church's liturgical and visual arts patrimony. Uh, has a palpable commitment uh, to trying to make sure that Catholicity uh, is unmistakable on campus. And we are honored to be joined today by the president of the Magdalen College of Liberal Arts to talk about what it means to be a Catholic university today, Dr. George Harn. Dr. George, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. So listen, we are in this period bracketing these anniversaries of, of Land of Lakes uh, and Ex Corte Ecclesia. Uh, you know, a, obviously, those are things that are on your mind. As, as you survey the landscape facing Catholic higher education these days, and specifically your situation in Magdalene in New Hampshire, how do you see the challenges to get an authentically Catholic higher education to your students today, and, and how are you attempting to meet those challenges? Yeah, I think it's it's a time of of uh, of change. It's a dynamic time. I think the 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 two events that you described, the Land of Lakes and the uh, Ex Corte Ecclesiae document that came out, really do, they do represent uh, the the sort of places in which we have to coexist uh, with other institutions of higher learning. Um, I think that the central thing that that uh, guides us is, in some ways, what John Paul II witnessed to in his throughout his papacy, which is that the truth will set us free. And if that motto, if that idea animates us then it's really pretty simple. We just have to find the truth of things and allow that to work its way into our lives in our institutions. And so for us, I think one of the key questions is, what is the truth of the human person? That was one of John Paul II's central questions. What is the, the truth of, of different spheres of reality, of culture, of nature? And then how should these truths be integrated into a coherent whole at an institution? Um, we're not indoctrinating our students. We're not, you know, uh, we're, we're guiding them. Uh, to use Plato's example, we're guiding them out of the cave. Um, our college is on a mountain. Um, we're trying to guide them to the to the to the top of that mountain to see reality as a whole. That and is that's a, going to integrate the root of education, isn't it? Educare, meaning to call someone out. Exactly. So its its roots are obviously in the Catholic tradition, but obviously they they predate that in the in the ancients. So it's it's really a, a kind of leading out, um, a leading up, um, and uh, and yet at the same time trying to, to offer a coherent vision of reality, of the truth of things. We really believe that the students see that vision with all of their being, their minds and their hearts, it will change them and they will ultimately find freedom and happiness. So it's, it's a really noble, noble calling, I think. It's, it's much more than just reading old dusty books. It's we're preparing them for a life of what we hope will be flourishing um, and happiness, but it's gonna be rooted in the truth. Yeah, although let's not knock reading old, dusty books. I, I happen to believe there's a considerable value in, in doing it. Uh, but I take your point. That's in service to something bigger, of course. Yeah. Uh, Magdalen College, uh, and of course, you know, every institution has this kind of promotional language where we try to describe what we're sure. about. Sure. It's usually very lofty and, and exactly. you know, intentionally inspirational. Um, but, the, you know, the question is what reality is behind that, right? Um, right. So Magdalen College describes itself uh, as in the business of educating students for greatness. Uh, and it encourages them in, in that phrase that we associate with St. John right. Paul II, of course. Uh, it encourages them, duke in altum, to, to set out into the deep. Operationally at Magdalene, what do you mean by that? 
Yeah, that, that's an excellent question. I think a contrast can be very useful. Um, I think often the great dangers in the world are not overtly evil or negative. The actual, the great danger that most of us face in our lives, and this is true of our students, is mediocrity. Um, we settle for less. And, um, and I, I tell our students all the time, I often will, will preface mediocrity with soul killing mediocrity <laughs> because <laughs> it ultimately will. And so we're constantly in the classroom, um, as we think and talk about the spiritual life, we are constantly calling our students to this higher form of excellence, which means at the, at the fundamental level, you do the readings for class. You write the best papers you can write. We have the best conversations around the seminar table that we can have. And we're constantly pushing ourselves to cooperate with the grace to grow in the faith. And it, we're, this is the, we're always on the lookout for mediocrity creeping in. Also, I think greatness, often when we think of greatness or leadership, we often think of people you know, on a public stage. But we very consciously cultivate the idea that most of the greatness that we need in our world is actually hidden. It's, it's in the realm of the family. It's, it's in those decisions that are made behind closed doors about the next steps that need to be taken for an institution or an organization. Um, so this greatness that we're calling them to isn't the greatness of, of network television. It's, it's going to be hidden largely. So that's, that's, I think that those are the two MCs. At, at a very basic fundamental level, we call them to, for excellence in every area of their lives. Um, but also a greatness of service that's going to probably be, remain hidden from view. No one's going to know about the, 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 those in critical decisions that they make and choices they make. So I think those are very practical ways. Well, I mean, speaking as a guy who spends some of his time in network television, I, I think it's just as well <laughs> you're not calling your students to grade because I'm not sure how much of it they would find uh, on a daily basis. Um, but uh, listen, you know, we you are trying to do all this, of course, uh, in the midst of a culture that isn't always supportive. Uh, right. You know, it's it's often not supportive of religious faith generally. Um, it can often be very critical of Catholicism specifically, uh, in part because, of course, the recent uh, difficulties with the clerical sexual abuse scandals, but just more generally because of what the, the Catholic Church is, let's face it, a countercultural option uh, right. in a society of the 21st century. So what kind of relationship do you think a Catholic college or university today ought to have with that broader culture that is definitely a mixed bag? You know, some would say it ought to be basically a retreat. You know, they would talk right. about a Benedict option, and they're not referring to Pope Benedict, of course, but they mean St. Benedict, sure. retreating into a kind of hermitage or monastery someplace and disengaging. You know, others would say, uh, they might not use this language, but their prescription would be basically compromised, that, that we need to meet the culture halfway and then we need to accommodate it. Um, others would talk, and, and this would sort of be the John Paul II option, I suppose, uh, you know, would talk about engaging uh, the culture from a distinctly Catholic point of view. Uh, it's not a combative relationship, but not one of surrender either. Um, I mean, on that landscape, you know, what, what, what do you think is the right choice and where do you try to position Magdalen College? Yeah, so I, I think, it, um, you know, re, the Office of Readings this morning um, spoke about martyrdom. It was uh, St. Augustine um, speaking of this and being very careful as pastors what pastors call their flock to achieve and what kind of promises you make. And he was warning them basically, you know, behind all of this, there's the chance of martyrdom you have to prepare them for this. They may have other material blessings in this world, but fundamentally they've got to be prepared to make the ultimate sacrifice. So at that level, I think our students have to be prepared to be, to, to make that, make that ultimate sacrifice. At the same time, we believe that light, the truth, the goodness are fundamentally attractive. And if we, if we raise those up, if we propose those to the larger culture, not everyone, but some will respond. And that's what we're called ultimately to do. So I think that, that, that approach of engagement without compromising on the essentials and the fundamentals is, is absolutely the approach that we take. I use the phrase um, sometimes that I want our students to be able to navigate a text by Thomas Aquinas and the New York subway. And that's kind <laughs> of a condensed, that's a condensed I, a statement, I think, for that larger ability to both have roots deep, deep in the, the Catholic intellectual tradition, which goes back before Catholicism even, but also uh, having the practical skills, practical ability and the courage to go out into the world, to set out into the deep, because we actually love the world, because it's God's world, it's his good creation. And these people, even those who oppose us with the, in, in the harshest terms, they're fundamentally made in the image and likeness of God, and we're called to love them. 
And um, that hymn, we sang it today at, the, at, at Laud's, at morning prayer, you know, which speaks of loving those who are on, who are with us as well as those who are opposing us. So that fundamental orientation is behind all of it. So yes, there are moments of, of opposition, but the fundamental disposition that we try to prepare our students for is one of a kind of a strong, robust engagement um, in which we do hold aloft the light. We do hold aloft, you know, the truth of things, uh, but with humility. And that's a fine tuning that's often, we often miss in a polarized culture and in a polarized church. We really do seek to serve the entire breadth of the church um, and avoid the tribalism, which is, seems to be consuming us in so many ways. Um, so it's fundamentally an open, open vision. At the same time, in a way, our four years at this, at this college, in many ways, is a kind of Benedict option. The students come here for four years. They read, they study, they pray, they grow, they mature, but they don't stay on the mountain. They ultimately are going to have to go out and, uh, and go back down into, into the world. So, that's so in other words, uh, Magdalene is a little bit of everything, right? There, there's a little bit of the Benedict option there in that intentionally they're stepping out of uh, the, the, the kind of rattle and hum of the, of the bigger, wider world for a little while, but preparing to re-engage it um, and preparing to love it. Um, right. So in, in the classic Catholic tradition, Dr. Harn, instead <laughs> of looking at this as an either or, you have framed it as a both and. Not bad for a convert, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> well done, well done. And I would also say, just it, we, we, during those four years, we also take students consciously into the cities. So Boston is nearby. Um, the students actually go into Boston on a regular basis and do service ministry there. Um, I take students personally to New York. I love New York. And um, as often as I can, I take them there to network with other Catholics, but also to, um, to engage, to learn how to ride the subway on their own um, and to be able to function in these, these, these more intense you know, urban cultures because they may be called there. Yeah. And we want to prepare them for that if that's, if that's and we have graduates in New York who are working in a variety of fields um, and they're flourishing. All right, so Dr. Harney, if uh, people want more information on the Magdalene College of the Liberal Arts, uh, online, obviously, this is the 21st century, where can we find it? So our, our web address is uh, www.magdalene.edu, um, and I think you'll find almost everything you'd like to know there. We have a, a new film that was just released, um, and of course, we're in, the, we're in the usual places on social media, on Facebook and Instagram. All right, so that's www.magdalene.edu. You can find everything you need to know about the Magdalene College of Liberal Arts in Warner, New Hampshire. One of the laboratories, I would say, one of the more interesting laboratories in the United States where this profoundly important question of what it means to be an authentic Catholic college uh, in a 21st century milieu is being worked out on a daily basis. Dr. George, I wish we had another hour to talk to you, but I know you're a busy man. But uh, promise me this, will you? Next year, when we're doing the 30th anniversary of Ex Corte, can we come to you again and have a lengthier conversation about the state of play in Catholic higher education? That'd be delightful. I look forward to it. All right, that's Dr. George Harn of the Magdalen College of Liberal Arts. This has been another occasional video feature on the Crux YouTube page. Thank you for joining us. Please check out the Crux site every day. That is cruxnow.com. One more time, cruxnow.com for the best in smart, wired, and independent Catholic journalism. Until we see each other again, this is John Allen. Thanks much for joining.